If you don't have an API and you need data from a website, web scraping is the way to go, especially with JavaScript. Most of the tools you'll be using would be Cherio, Playwright, or Puppet Head. But we are going to be using this one. It's called Crawly, the wrapper around these technologies. Crawly comes with support for TypeScript, proxy management, link queuing, anti-blocking, handle, infinite scrolling, extract phone numbers. It can also extract social media handles and so much more. Um, so I'm in my terminal now and then we're just going to run the commands to set up a new project, right? So fpx crawly create and we can give our crawler a name. I'll call this my crawler from the list of starter templates. Let's pick this getting started example with TypeScript. Once that's installed, we can just change directory into the project. So you can see Crawly has created this project for us. So let's run it in VS Code. In my VS Code, we have everything all set up for us. We have the node module, we have the SRC, which contains just the main.ts. We'll look at this in a bit. If you look in here, you can see we have our Docker ignore. Don't worry if you don't know about Docker. We have our git ignore, our Docker file, and our TS copy. So these are the basic building blocks for us to get started with our crawler. So what we need to do now is we also need to install Playwright properly. We can now install Playwright by running npx Playwright install. So press enter. Cool. So that's done now. So let's just test to see if it's running. We're just going to say npm start. And this should start our crawler. And it's just going to fetch that information. You can notice it's now created a storage folder for us where it stores all the information we want. So it's crawling the crawly website. So it's finished scraping the website. So go to the storage data set, and this is where you get to see all that information. Let's say you want to scrape all the data on LinkedIn. You first need to check if you can go to any domain or any URL, just make sure it's the home directory of that URL. You can now type in robots.txt. So once you press enter, you'll be able to access the robots.txt file. And the robot text file, all it's doing is it gives us information about what the owner of the site wants us to do if we are a bot or what he wants bots or robots to do, right? So if you look at it, you'll see it says the use of robots is strictly prohibited. So that's the word you're looking for. So over here, um, LinkedIn has blocked every bot from accessing these pages on their website, right? If you look at a news website like the Punch newspaper, for example, and we say we want to check their robot text, you can see here it says, okay, all robots uh, disallow them from accessing the wp-admin. And then it also provides a sitemap, but don't worry about that for now. So what about Jumia, like an e-commerce website, right? You can see it also has different rules. So you can see public sites, bots must follow the rules. So luckily for us, this site has given us some rules. They have these rules and with these rules, if you follow them, hopefully you won't get kicked out of the site because if you use bots, your IP will get blocked. If the site provides an API, then there's no need for you to scrape that site. So the site I'm going to be scraping today is a Shopify demo store. So the strategy to scrape these sites are kind of almost the same. But in most cases, this is how you would do it. You would need to come into the site that you want to scrape. And then you want to go to a place where you have access to all the products or links to all the products. So we want to get all these products over here, the entertainment speakers, woofers and sales and all that stuff. And then we'll be able to click on something, let's say audio. And then once we click on this category, we want to have access to this page where we have all the audio products. As we open them like this, all this information we want, like the title, we can also take the price. We're going to build this out and then you guys can take it to the next level. So let's go back to the collection page. So I'll just click on all collection. We need this URL over here in our application, right? So let's go to the main.ts file. And in the main.ts file, we want to get rid of everything over here. We can now start creating our scraper. So we can say imports from Crawly. So we're going to import Crawly and what we need from Crawly is we need the playwright crawler. So let's create a constant and we'll just assign it to crawler new playwright crawler and inside this new playwright crawler we want an object and inside this object here is where we can start putting in everything we want our crawler to do. So what we want here is 
we want to wait for us to handle requests. So we're going to say we want the request handler. And the request handler is where we start to add our request or what we want the crawler to go out and do for us. All right. And this is going to be an asynchronous function. So we'll say async. It's going to expose certain things to us. So we're going to use the structure in here to get the page. This is where we have access to the existing page or to the current page that we're working with. What you want to do is check if something is on the page. I want to get the elements here. I just need to click on this icon over here. And then once I click on it, I can see that this is a link that takes us to this URL here for the receivers. And then you can also notice it has these class names over here. So we just need the way to target each of these classes or each of these items, which are to share the same class names. So now we know what we want to target, right? And now we're just going to say we want a wait page dot wait for a selector. All right. What it does is it makes the crawler wait for a selector to show up. We're just going to say we want a class inside quotes here. We're going to then paste in that class, which is this collection dash block dash item. So that's going to select those categories on the page for us. We need a way for us to get the title, right? So we can say const title and we'll assign this to an await. And now we're going to wait for the page. We want to get the selectors that we have on this page, right? We want dollar sign, dollar sign eval. It selects all the elements that match and then inside this eval method what we want is in quotes we want to first add again the class that we just copied so we want to select all these elements inside here and this eval what it does is it takes in a second parameter which is going to be a callback function this callback function exposes us to the elements that we are currently on so i can say say we want the elements i'm just going to call it els for now and then we will just say we want to return the elements dot map we want the elements we then grab the text that we want right we can say we now want the title dots and we want to kind of loop over it we want a for each and then we can take the text that we want right but now it exposes us to the text and we can say we also want the index of that text so I'll say idx so let's just console log this out you can then say you want away crawler dot run. You just need to have an array at the path to the URL you would like to start scraping from. We want in quotes. Don't forget to put in quotes. And now this would first go to this URL. Once it gets there, going to check for these classes here. And then it's going to add or get the names and text for these classes over here. So let's run the scraper. You can just run npm start you can see how fast it is accessory all tvs audios audio accessories and so on and so forth so it gives us all the categories that we have we're successfully getting data from another website is it that cool so crawling is when you go to websites and you start grabbing all the useful links you might need that's what we're going to do next so when we start to crawl sites we would also need a way for us to add those links to a queue and that's what we call NQ links in Crawly. So instead of doing all this, we don't need this. We also don't need this part of the code. So let's get rid of that. Since we're using the structuring, we can get the NQ links. You can then say you want to await NQ links. What it takes in is an object. And inside this object, what we want is the selector. What it does is we can then use it to target the same element. So instead of also wish writing this class every time, I think what we can do is just create a simple variable and then work with that variable. So I could just say const. Let's call this element collection selector. Take the string over here and then we'll add it here. All right. So we have that class name just in one place. So we just say collector and then we're going to also add it here. So collection selector all right we also need to give the scraping data a label so i'll say label and we'll just assign this to a collection this is the label that we're going to be using to access this information that this nq links is going to give us every time we run our crawler it always gives us a request object that we can work with so let's log out the request dot url now it's showing us all the urls so <laughs> 
It's not just going to be URLs we can't copy. In our request handler, we'll create an if block and then we will use the labels to know what phase of the crawling stage we are in. If the request dot label is equal to the details page, then we want to run or handle the code in a certain way. And if we're not on the detail page, we can create another else if statement. So we can say else if, if the label is equals to collection, we want else block, and then we're just going to drag it into the else block. So this is going to be our default behavior. It will then check, create the collection. And then if there is a collection, it would also check if we are in the collection page, then we want to await for the page and we want to wait for the selector. All right. So we'll go back into the browser and let's click on, uh, let's say speakers for now, click on this icon again. It's going to allow you to select any of these elements here. So we can select that. You would notice they all have a class of product item. We want the product item and then we want the links in the product item. So let's try and target that. This we're going to be using this link a couple of times. We can still do it again, just like before. And then we just change those class names. So we'll just duplicate this, take it to this if else block here. What we'll call this is product dash item and we want the link so we'll say greater than anchor that's going to give us all the links on this page right so let's call this product selector okay and then in here we could just instead of adding a string we could just reference the product selector so now that we have the product selector we can easily enqueue that product selection so we can say await enqueue links I will call the NQ link method. So we want the selector and we want the product selector, which is what we just created up here, this CSS class. And then we're just going to give it a label and let's just call this label detail. Let's go back. So what we can do now is we can say, since we are in this product page, we want a way for us to select the pagination. If you'd like to see a video where we handle the site that has infinite scrolling, just let me know in the comment section. But what we want is not just to get only the products for this particular one page. We want to be able to come into here. And if there is a next button or something like this, we want to be able to check, go to that next page and then scrape the data inside here and then go to the next page again, click next again and scrape the data inside here and then do the same. We keep repeating it because sometimes these pages can be like a hundred pages, right? Just right click on the next button and click on inspect. This will take us straight to the element itself. And then we can check what the link or what the class is, right? So I'm just going to copy this code out. In our VS code, what we can do now is we can say we want to await for a page. And we want to use, instead of typing query selector in playwright, what we can do is just use the dollar sign selector. This is equivalent to say, query selector all right and if you want query selector all you do double dollar sign and that will give you your query selector all to select all the elements that we are looking for so we have this class of anchor link and then we have this pagination underscore underscore next so let's use this next page selector and what we're looking for over here is our next page selector we can check if it's there and if there is a next page selector in the dome then we can do something so what we'll do here is say we want to assign it to a constance and uh, let's call this next button now we can check if next button then we want to do something that's why we want to enqueue our links so we can say away enqueue links we we'll say our selector is the next button that is this next page selector after that we would just need to assign the same label that we are using so we'll say label and then we'll just assign this again to collection so we'll say collection like so and now it's going to scrape the site again but this time it's going to check with pagination and it's going to go from page to page to page and now it's starting to fetch each of the products very cool so we'll go back here and let's just click on this in this product page now that we're crawling the entire site we can now start scraping our data so we want to scrape this product title we also want price we also would like to scrape the sku we would also try to figure out if there is a product in stock we have this class called product dash meta from here we can then select any of the elements we want i will just change this to red all right so you can see now we're selecting everything 
in this block. But what we want here is the H1. And now we're selecting only the H1. What we want to do, if the label is assigned to detail, we want to await page dot, and we want to use the playwrights locator. Inside the string, we want this class of product dash meta H1 is what we want, right? It also chains to the text content. This would give us whatever text content is inside this element. So we'll just assign it to a constant and we'll say, actually, let's try and console log that value out and see whether we are getting the real title of each product. Let's run our script by again. You can see now it's showing us the product title is, and then it gives us the name of that product. So just like that, we're getting the title for each of the products on this online store. We can also get the SKU. And you can see this SKU is just a span that has this class of product dash meta on the double underscore SKU numbers. Go back into VS Code. Let's just create uh, another constant. Let's call this SKU. We want to await for the page dot locator. Inside this locator, you know the drill, guys. Just add your class dot text content. And this gives us that text content. Let's go back into the details page and then let's try and select the price over here. And it's just a span that has a class of price. If you look in here, you would notice that we have a sales price, which is in another span, which is nested inside the price class. And then we now have the price nested in this element. So let's go back into VS Code. Let me show you guys. So in here, you can just say you want a const price element. I will just assign this to page dot locator. It's a span with a class of price. So we say span with a class of price like so. The locator also not just helps us get the price, but it also helps us filter out the text. So we can say we want this locator dot filter. Now that we can filter this, this filter method, what it accepts is an object. So we can check if it has a text. We can check if it doesn't have a text. We can check if it has something or if it doesn't have something, all right? So what we're looking for is has text. So we're going to check if the text in here is a dollar sign, and then we just want to get only the first. So we can still change it again, dot first. And what this first method will do is return the locator to the first matching element, as it says over here. Just put the mouse on it and you can read more about what it's doing. We are going to select this element, check if it has a dollar sign behind it. And if it does, we want to get the first matching element that matches it. And we want to ignore the dollar sign, but we just want, we're only interested in the number over here. We have a constant. So let's call this current price. And we will just assign this to an await. What we wait for is the price element. And we want the text content of it. So we'll say text content. And then we can then say create a constant. And let's call this raw price. Assign this raw price to whatever the current price is. Because it's a string, we can then split this element. We want to get rid of the dollar sign. And then we want the first element. And then we can just create another constant and call this price. We strictly make it a number. And now we can say raw price dot replace comma. So we want to clean up all the comma signs and just replace it with a simple empty string. So we want to check if this is in stock. That is, if this text is available, then we want to do something with it. If this element is available. And we can use that to target our element or ta target what we want. So we can say we want a constant. And let's call this constant in stock element. And then we'll just assign it to a page. And now we want the page dot locator. We want to assign it to, to the span with a class of product dash form double underscore inventory. All right. So now we are selecting the element in the DOM. We can then filter that information that we're getting. We want dot filter. If it has that text of it's in stock, we can say dot first. So now that we have this, what we can do is create another constant. Let's call this in stock. Okay. Now we're just going to assign it to an await in stock elements dot count. So we're going to check if the count of this element if it's greater than zero. 
So this obviously is a boolean, so it's going to return true or false to us. So you can see it says true, 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 and false. It's giving us our booleans. So now that we're getting all this information, wouldn't it be nice if we could take all this information and just store it somewhere? So right here at the top from Crawley, we are going to bring in the data set and this data set what it does is it gives us the ability to store data or to create data sets and store that data set we could just go down here into our e statement where we are working with the product details so if i say await data sets dot push data called this push data method where we will pass in the title the sku the price and whether the product is in stock if we run the script by again it's going to save it for us into this directory called storage data sets and this is where we'll be able to have it so you can see now we have 001 and it starts giving us this information individually listing out each of the products and that's fine in some use cases but what if you want to put everything into one file what i like to do is say await and i want data sets but instead of the dot push i want the export to json or to csv say export to json and it's going to export the file as a json file so you need to give that file a name and then we can work with it and also you can even duplicate this and just change this to csv so you can say csv you can also maybe save it in a database or somewhere like that this is going to get the data and store the data in the key value stores so if you come to key value store you will notice that we have this default over here so if you come to default you will start seeing all the files once it starts saving. So you can see now we have our saved product.json. So you can see all our elements are all in this array. And this array just contains all the objects that we have from the data sets that we are adding. And then you can export this one file somewhere else. You can also export it as a CSV. So if you check the CSV here, you will see this is all the information about each of the products. Isn't this cool, guys? With just a very, very little amount of code, less than 70 lines of code, you've been able to build your own crawler. So that's it. I just wanted to show you guys how you could build a web crawler and script data from any website you want. If you want to see more videos like this, just let me know in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Help me give this video a like. It really helps out this channel to grow. And if you notice I started speaking English, that's because some of us want to hear English. Thanks so much for watching. So I'll see you guys in the next video.